In this video, we're going to have a look at trigonometric functions with a horizontal translation or a horizontal shift. When a value is added or subtracted to the angle of a trig function, there will be a horizontal translation taking place. Here we have the basic sin graph, y is equal to sin x. And as soon as I add a c value, you will see that the graph shifts horizontally. Here it is important to note that when the c value is positive, the graph shifts to the left in the negative direction. When the c value, however, becomes negative, the graph shifts to the right in the positive direction. From the sketch, it is also clear that the c value does not influence the amplitude of the graph because both of these graphs have an amplitude of 1. And neither does it influence the period of the graph, because both graphs still take 360 degrees to complete one wavelength. Let's have a look at how you will draw such a function. Sketch the graph of minus 2 cos of x minus 30 for the interval minus 150 to 210 degrees. In the previous lesson, I already explained how important it is to get a basic idea of what the graph will look like before you draw the final graph. Firstly, we know that the minus in the front of the equation indicates that it has been reflected around the x-axis and will now look like this. Next, a 2 is multiplied to the front, which means the amplitude changes to 2 and stretches the graph to a maximum of 2 and a minimum of minus 2. And now we need to move this function 30 degrees. And we've just seen that minus 30 means each coordinate will move 30 degrees in the positive direction to the right. And now that we have more or less an idea of what the graph will look like, we can use the calculator to determine all the coordinates, plot those points, and then connect to draw the graph. On your calculator, you start off changing the mode to table mode, option 3, and then you read in your equation, and this will be minus 2, cos, and then the calculator automatically adds a bracket. We need to add our x, subtract 30, and then close the bracket. Our interval starts at minus 150 degrees and ends at 210, according to the question. And for the steps, a good idea is to work in 30s because of the shift of 30 degrees. And here we have all the necessary coordinates that we can now go and plot. Just a reminder that you don't have to plot all the coordinates. We do have to show the starting point, which is minus 150 and 2. And then as we move down, the next important point, if we look at our y values, will be the x-intercept at minus 60. The graph then moves down and has a minimum value, which will be a turning point at 30 minus 2, and then turns upward again, and the next important point will then be the x-intercept at 120. And lastly, as it moves up, the final coordinate is also the turning point at 210 and 2. And now we can connect all these coordinates, just a reminder about the form of the graph, and not connecting them with straight lines. The final important coordinate that we still need to indicate is the y-intercept. And even though this time the y-intercept was not given in all the coordinates on the calculator, we know how to determine a y-intercept, and that is by taking the equation and substituting the x-value with 0. That means if we simplify, we can determine the y-intercept by calculating minus 2 cos of minus 30 on the calculator. This y-intercept then has to be indicated on the sketch as 0 and minus 1,73. And here we have the complete graph for the specific interval. Next, a few interpretation questions can be asked. And the first is, give the amplitude and period of the graph. By now, you should know that the amplitude is indicated by the constant value in front of the equation, or it can also be determined reading the maximum displacement from the resting position or the midline on the graph itself. 
and here that value is 2 because if you look at the graph the midline is the x-axis and from there the maximum displacement up as well as down is 2 units. It still takes this graph 360 degrees to complete one full wavelength, so the period is 360 degrees. Question 2. Give the range of f. For the range, we need to determine where this graph starts according to the y values, the y-axis, and that is at minus 2, and then it goes all the way up to a value of 2. Therefore, the range will be all y values between minus 2 and 2. And this can of course also be written in interval notation. So y will be between minus 2 and 2. In the next lesson, we'll have a look at how we can take trig functions and stretch them horizontally.